Hi everyone, this is Jalen and this is my full review of Toxido Pulse Gen 2 after 3 weeks of use as my daily laptop. Toxido Computer does not sponsor this video, meaning that the video will express my own experience with all credibility and impartiality. Starting with design and good quality, the Pulse 15 Gen 2 chassis is made of magnesium, making the laptop simultaneously light and solid. The device weighs a kilo and a half and has an elegant metallic look that does not attract fingerprints. In addition, the Pulse 15 Gen 2 is slim and compact. All these features make it ultra portable and suitable for travel. It is also worth noting that magnesium is also less thermally conductive. Less heat means more battery life and more performance. What I don't like is the lack of color options. This dark gray metallic color is nice, but people have different tastes. So I hope Toxedo addresses that in their next gen devices. As for the AI ports, we find on the right side the DC import, one HDMI 2.0 that supports 4K USD at 60 Hz and 2K Full HD at 120 Hz, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Tip A and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Tip C, which support DisplayPort 1.4 and power delivery of 20 volt and 3.25 ampere. On the left side we have a Kensington look port, 1 gigabit LAN RJ45, a USB 2.0 Tip A, 1 USB 3.2 Gen 2 Tip A, a headphone jack port and a micro SD card reader. Port selection was good and it would have been excellent if there was Thunderbolt support. What do you think? Do you find Thunderbolt necessary in a laptop of this type? Now let's take a look at the display. The display is excellent. It is a 15.6 inch 2K IPS panel that provides you with sharp colors, wide viewing angles, and a refresh rate of 165Hz to have a pleasant viewing experience. On top of this, it is matte anti glare and has a brightness of 350 nits, which makes it suitable for outdoor work unless you want to work in a direct sunlight on a very sunny day. Then you may face some difficulties. But I don't know why someone would use his laptop in such circumstances. Like all modern IPS displays, in some circumstances, such as working in a dark room at high brightness, you may notice bright areas along the frame, which is normal. In the past month, I only witnessed this phenomenon one or twice. In this picture, I deliberately, exaggeratedly highlight the phenomenon for illustrative purposes, as you in most cases will not notice its presence, and therefore it will not affect your experience. In short, the display is excellent. After that, let's talk about the keyboard and touchpad. Here we have a full-size keyboard with a white backlight. The keys are large, stable, and have an excellent pressure point. So you get correct pressure even on the edges of the keys. These characteristics enable the Pulse 15 to provide an accurate typing experience at a fast typing speed. However, due to the compact design, the key travel is short. So if you have fat fingers, you may hit unintended keys by mistake. Moreover, instead of the ugly window zipper key, you get the Tox zipper key. Also, you can choose the layout that suits your needs from a wide range of ISO and ANSI common languages keyboard layouts. And you can even order the Pulse 15 with a custom or blank keyboard layout. For backlight brightness, you can disable the backlight or control its level. At it comes with two, using the special keys F and plus space. I think you noticed that there is no numpad. So, if you, like me, like the numpad and use it a lot, you may find it challenging to get used to its absence. Except that, my experience with this keyboard has been pretty good. The one I haven't had a good experience with is the touchpad. As I pointed out in the unboxing video, I could not use the touchpad for more than 15 minutes without making the skin of my fingers irritate. Of course, I would not have faced this problem if the touchpad was of glass. In addition, I do not know why it's not centered. All this will not prevent me from doing it justice and saying that it is wide enough and precise. It has integrated mouse buttons and supports multi-gesture and scroll function. Overall, you can say that the touchpad is acceptable. The review wouldn't be complete without talking about the wireless networking experience. The Toxedo Pulse 15 comes with an Intel 200AX wireless network adapter card that supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. It also supports a maximum speed of 2.4 gigabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band 
and 574 megabytes per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band. My experience with Bluetooth was excellent. The connection is stable and device detection is fast. On the other hand, I initially encountered some problems with the Wi-Fi. I suffered from frequent disconnections and slow internet speed. After many hours of troubleshooting, I was able to fix the problem, either by updating the kernel to version 5.19 or making some minor adjustment to the router settings without updating the kernel. Other than that, the Wi-Fi connection was stable and fast. In conclusion, we can safely say that this laptop offers a good Wi-Fi and Bluetooth experience. Now let's talk a little about the webcam, microphone and speaker. And we start with the webcam, which has a resolution of 720p, 0.9 megapixels and a refresh rate of 30 fps. The colors are not in. And in good lighting, you get good photos and videos. So you don't have to worry about the possibility of being the ugliest guy in an online meeting or conference. You won't be. In addition, you have an infrared camera that supports face unlock feature via the Howdy command line app, for example, on Linux or Windows Hello on Windows. Unfortunately, Tuxedo does not have Go client to configure this feature, so I have Tuxedo develops one as Steambook does with Steambook Face. As for the mic, it's surprisingly not bad for a bit in mind. This is my full review of Tuxedo Pulse 15 Gen 2 from Tuxedo Computer after 3 weeks of use as my daily drive. The recorded sound is natural and clear, even with the mic picking up touchpad and keyboard clicks. Of course, it won't match studio mics, but at least you can count on it for sample sound recording without worrying about your voice sounding bad. In short, the mic is decent. As for the speakers, they are slightly above average. The sound is clear, there is no distortion at high volume, and the amount of bass is acceptable. But I will not hide from you that I expected the sound to be louder and better, especially on a laptop of this category. It is worth noting that the sound holes are in the bottom right, so you may block them a little if you play the laptop on a soft surface, just as a couch, for example. Next, let's discuss specs. First, we start with the processor. The Pulse 15 Gen 2 features a performance-optimized Ryzen 7 5700U. Tuxedo pushed this processor's TDP to 35 watts, making Pulse 15 Gen 2 more powerful than competitors who rely on the default AMD TDP. The Ryzen 7 5700U comes with 8 cores and 16 threads, with a maximum clock rate of 4.4 GHz. When talking about the processor, it is necessary to talk about cooling. The company uses an efficient and non-disturbing dual fan cooling solution to cool this processor. The device is surprisingly silent in most normal user scenarios. Bravo Tuxedo! Second, the memory characteristics. This laptop comes with 3200MHz Samsung DDR4 RAM, upgradable to 64GB with two RAM slots. Also, you can configure the RAM size from A to 64 before ordering. Third, storage properties. Similar to RAM, Tuxedo uses NVMe SSDs from Samsung, which significantly improves the performance of the Pulse 15 Gen 2. It is worth noting that the device has two M2 SSD slots that support up to 4TB with the option to configure the capacity and type upon order. Finally, let's talk about the graphics card. The laptop has an integrated 8-core Radeon RX Vega 8 graphics card with a maximum clock rate of 1900 MHz. Unfortunately, Pulse 15 Gen 2 does not have a dedicated GPU option and you cannot use an external graphics card due to the lack of Thunderbolt support. That means you will be limited to the integrated GPU performance, which we will address later in this video. When talking about laptops, battery life is an important criterion. The Pulse 15 Gen 2 features a 91 Watt hour battery that according to Tuxedo computers can stand up to 18 hours in idle mode at minimum brightness with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off and without the keyboard backlight. This statement prompted me to test the battery extensively for the past 3 weeks and the results were as follows. 10 hours of looping YouTube videos over Wi-Fi at 50% brightness, 165Hz display refresh rate and Bluetooth on. If you decrease the brightness to 30% and the refresh rate to 40Hz, you get an extra hour and a half. In typical user scenarios that include browsing, word processing, watching some videos and some productivity tasks at 50% brightness and 165Hz display refresh rate with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, the battery stands for 12 hours. The latter can last up to 14 hours. If we enable power saving mode, reduce brightness to 30% and configure the display refresh rate to 60Hz. These results are impressive and leave us with no choice but to say that the battery life on the Tuxedo Pulse 15 Gen 2 is excellent as it provides 2 days of use at an average of 6 hours a day 
for battery charging the laptop arrives with 65 watt charger capable of charging the battery from 20 to 90 percent within one hour and a half while using the device in addition it can charge via the USB-C port but in USB-C charging the CPU is limited to a maximum of 25 TDP which means you will not get maximum performance I noticed that the charger emits a buzzing sound which after an investigation turned out to be a normal electrical phenomenon this sound may be annoying to some people and it is worth noting that the sound intensity relates to your room temperature what do you think about the battery life of the Porsche 15 Gen 2? tell me in the comments talking about battery life leads us to talk about performance to evaluate the performance of the Porsche 15 Gen 2 I used Geekbench and Passmark tools and the results were as follows on the battery the laptop got on Geekbench 5 762 single core score and 5357 multi core score and on Passmark 30734 CPU mark score with the charger plugged in the laptop got on Geekbench 5 1251 single core score and 7394 multi core score and on Passmark 19037 CPU mark score the performance optimized Ryzen 7 5700U delivers a powerful performance, making the Pulse 15 Gen 2 an excellent choice for developers and business users. On the GPU side, the integrated RX Vega 8 GPU is suitable for simple and light graphics tasks. However, while I can say that this integrated GPU is better than the low end dedicated GPUs, it still has limited performance compared to the mid range dedicated GPUs. With the RX Vega 8, the Pulse 15 scores 137 points in the Blender performance test on the battery and 174 points on the AC power, surprisingly outperforming the i9 12900H processor which got only 162 points in brief this is not a gaming laptop and if you allow me i want to tell you do not make games the focus of your life instead learn and practice something that benefits you and always remember that gpus are not made just for gaming do you want to subject the Pulse 15 gen 2 to more benchmark tests tell me in the comments no laptop will be a linux laptop unless it offers configuration and customization options which is what Tuxedo's laptop do and the Pulse 15 gen 2 is no exception Except for the processor and the display, you can configure and customize almost every part. You can set the RAM size from 8 to 64 GB. Also, you can customize your storage by choosing the type of SSD, Samsung 980, Samsung 980 EVO Plus, or Samsung 980 Pro. And storage capacity from 250 GB to 2TB, or even ordering the device without storage. The same applies to the second storage port. In addition, you can choose the keyboard layout that suits you from more than 25 ANC and ISO layouts with the option to request a custom layout or even a completely blank one. Yeah, you hit me right. You can order the Pulse 15 with a custom or blank keyboard layout. I wouldn't be wrong if I said that Tuxedo is far ahead on keyboard layout options over other Linux laptop manufacturers. If you want the Pulse 15 without a wireless network card, or you own one and want to use it instead of the Intel AX200. The without Wi-Fi and Bluetooth option is there to fulfill your desire. For the operating system, Tuxedo Computers has developed their own called Tuxedo OS. An Ubuntu-based distro with the KDE Plasma desktop. We will discuss this in detail later in this video. In addition to Tuxedo OS, you can order the laptop with Vanilla Ubuntu, Kubuntu or Ubuntu Budge. All of the above options are available with or without an encryption option. If the previous option do not suit you, the option without Linux is there. In the past three weeks, I have tried many distros such as Arch, Manjaro, and Fedora, and I have not encountered any compatibility issues. Want to try Windows on this laptop? Scroll down to choose the Windows version you want, 10 or 11, with or without a license, as a virtual machine within Linux, or as a physical installation. You can also risk and pay more money to get additional years of warranty, which I would never recommend because two years is more than enough. And I think you are sane enough to realize that the extended paid warranty is pure gambling and a waste of money. As for the plug or the power cord, you have 5 options, Europe, US, UK, Switzerland and Italy. So presumably you won't need a plug adapter. If you want the Pulse 15 to have your logo instead of the Tuxedo logo or not to have any logo, you can achieve this by using the chassis logo options provided by Tuxedo. 
Furthermore, an express assembly service is may also available. Finally, you can set instruction about your device to the Tuxedo team at the bottom of the configuration section. Now let's say you bought the device, but after a while you wanted to upgrade some parts or clean the fans. Is that possible? And if it is, is it easy? Tuxedo computer states that you can remove the lower tray and clean the fan without losing the warranty. All you need is screwdriver suitable for loosening the screws and a plastic card to open the clipped parts. After removing the bottom tray, a quick look is enough to realize how easy it is to upgrade the parts 15. In addition to the RAM and the SSD, you can easily change the battery and the network card. After this, let's talk about BIOS and security. The Porsche 15 Gen 2 features IME BIOS. It is stable and rich in features, including security features, but it is cloud source. Currently, there is no core boot option. Fortunately, the Tuxedo team is working hard to make it available on their laptops as soon as possible. From the BIOS interface, you can enable disable the webcam, configure the keyboard backlight, enable disable Wi-Fi, configure ports power, choose a performance profile, Enable or disable TPM via FTPM. Configure some CPU features. Enable disable secure boot. Now let's boot in the OS. As mentioned earlier, the Tuxedo OS is based on Ubuntu and uses KDE Plasma as desktop environment. It is stable, customizable, lightweight, and optimized for Tuxedo hardware. It comes bundled with all the necessary tools to ensure you get an out-of-the-box experience. This include Tuxedo keyboards, drivers, Tuxedo Tom. Tuxedo Tom is a little helper that provides services, updates, and fixes for Tuxedo devices in the background. Tuxedo Touchpad Switch. Tuxedo Touchpad Switch is a Linux driver that will trigger the touchpad disabled LED, formerly unfectional under Linux. And finally, Tuxedo Control Center, an easy to use tool that helps you get a real time overview of your CPU and GPU data. Choose a predefined performance profile. Create a custom performance profile. Control fan speed, configure CPU frequency, set the number of logical cores, and many more. The TCC is a valuable tool with plenty of configuration options that needs a dedicated video to explain all its features. If your system fails, you can download the Tuxedo OS Live ISO, which has a true tool to help you repair your broken OS. You can also use the included Wi-Fi USB drive for fully automated fresh installation of one of the following distro. Tuxedo OS, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, OpenSUSE, Zubuntu, Manjaro, Elementary OS, Ubuntu Mate, and Ubuntu Budgie. In terms of services, you get a free 10 GB My Tuxedo Cloud Storage registration code affixed to the last page of the manual. My Tuxedo Cloud is a next cloud based service. That means you can use either the next cloud desktop app or the web interface to log in. My experience with Tuxedo OS was excellent, except for two issues. The first was the Wi Fi drop issue, which I described earlier. And the second was the broken suspend. This latter is not specific to Tuxedo OS or hardware, but affects all Linux distributions with NVMe SSD. To fix the broken suspend and system freeze after the laptop resumes, you should add the IO and MU equal soft kernel parameter to your graph configuration file. For more details, watch my full video about how to fix suspend failures with NVMe drives on Linux. Last but not least, the Porsche 15 Gen 2 price starts at 1,159 euros with 8 GB of RAM and 250 GB of SSD and goes up to 2,019 euros with 64 GB RAM and 40 GB SSD. The price is competitive. It is even lower than the prices of most other Linux notebooks in the same category. In conclusion, the Porsche 15 Gen 2 is a solid, ultra portable, and powerful Linux notebook. It has an excellent battery life, a fast high resolution display, and offers plenty of configuration and customization options. It has not a dedicated GPU, a Thunderbolt port, and the speaker's mic's welcome experience could be better. Overall, the Pulse 15 Gen 2 is one of the best options for developers, business users, and any Linux user who needs a powerful multitasking laptop with excellent battery life. The Pulse 15 is worth what you pay for it.